Dear viewers, welcome to Nursat Satellite Station in Tel Elimir TV. Let's start with the headlines. His Majesty King Abdullah II underwent a successful surgery in Germany. Thousands participated in Palm Sunday procession in Jerusalem despite the pain and difficulties. The Latin Patriarchate announces the dates of Episcopal ordination for new patriarchal representatives. We also have the Congregation of Religious Orders stresses the importance of the consecrated life in the procession of the Synod. Welcome back. Within the framework of his weekly Christian teachings, His Holiness Pope Francis welcomed the believers coming from all over the world to the Vatican, where His Holiness pointed out that the peace of the Lord Jesus follows the path of meekness and the cross, indicating that the weapons of the gospel are prayer, tenderness, love, and free forgiveness. His Holiness concluded by saying, Let us remember with the approach of Easter that Jesus is our peace and that with Christ everything will turn into our good, calling the believers to be at peace even during hardships. Most Holy Father, the English-speaking visitors and pilgrims present today wish to express to you their sentiments sentiments of respect and esteem and to assure you of their prayers for your ministry as the successor of Peter. At the end of the audience, we will sing together the Our Father in Latin. The Holy Father will then impart his apostolic blessing, which he willingly extends to all children and young people, the elderly and the sick. His Holiness also intends to bless any religious articles you may have brought for this purpose. The following is a summary of the Holy Father's words this morning. Dear brothers and sisters, during this Holy Week, the Church celebrates the mystery of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. Last Sunday, we recalled the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. The crowds acclaimed him as the Messiah who would bring about a glorious peace by freeing Jerusalem from Roman occupation. Yet the peace Jesus brought did not employ the strategies of the world. Rather than recourse to violence, it comes through the humility and meekness that led him to the cross. By dying for our sins, Christ has set us free. In Dostoevsky's novel, The Brothers Karamazov, the Grand Inquisitor accuses Jesus of not using his power to establish peace, but rather respecting the freedom of individual men and women. Indeed, the peace that Jesus brings does not employ force, but only the weapons of the gospel prayer, forgiveness, and compassion for all our neighbors. This, not the blasphemous violence of war, is the peace of Easter, the peace that changes history and the hearts of all who accept it. This week, let us draw near to Christ, crucified and risen, and implore his gift of peace in our hearts and in our world. On the other hand, Pope Francis called for an Easter truce to achieve peace in Ukraine. His Holiness said before the recitation of the Angelus Prayer, the angel of the Lord had said to Mary at the Annunciation, there is nothing incapable of God even to put an end to a war that perpetuates a day that afflicts all our enemies' defenseless civilians. He added, in the days leading up to Easter, we prepare to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ's victory over sin and death, and not over one person and against another. And sealing, Christ took upon the cross to free us from the power of evil, and died so that love, life, and peace might reign. The Royal Hashemite Court announced that His Majesty King Abdullah II underwent a successful operation last Tuesday to treat a herniated disc in the thoracic spine area. And the court said that His Majesty will spend a period of rest based on the advice of doctors after the operation he underwent in one of the specialized hospitals in the German city, Frankfurt, before returning to the homeland safe and sound. Nursat Satellite Office in Jordan and Palestine, represented by its director, Dr. Basim al Sam'an, prays to the Almighty God to grant His Majesty a speedy recovery, to remain a symbol and a leader in Jordan's march towards construction and prosperity and serving the cause of the homeland and the nation. Thousands of Christians marching according to the Western calendar in the Old City of Jerusalem participated in the Palm Sunday procession after His Beatitude Pier Battista Pizzabella, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, presided over the Palm Sunday Mass in the Church of the Resurrection. The procession started from the Church of Beit Faji in Jabal Tur, 
in Jerusalem and stopped in the vicinity of the church of Dama. There, his beatitude delivered a sermon on this occasion in which he said, We are today in a normal atmosphere after two years of the outbreak of the corona epidemic and the closure of churches. We are very happy, and for us, this is a kind of resurrection. Then the march headed to the doors of the tribes led by the scouting teams, and Father Khaled Gammo, one of the priests of the Latin Patriarchate, said, Starting from this place from which Christ set off to the city of Jerusalem, specifically to the monastery of St. Hannah, this cycle that Christ began in his life, we remember that the brotherhood and humanity that unites us is a supreme message despite the pain and difficulties we live in. And it reminds us today we are all invited to the city of Jerusalem, the city of meeting and love. The Greek Orthodox Patriarchate affirmed the commitment of the churches in the Holy Land to reviving the holidays and participating in prayers in the Old City, considering that access to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a right for its children during the celebrations of Great Saturday and the Glorious Resurrection Day. The Patriarchate affirmed its explicit rejection of all unfair measures by the police, which restricts the freedom to practice rites and worship in Jerusalem. The Patriarchate stressed its commitment to provide spiritual services in all churches and squares, and religious rites and prayers will be held as usual by the Patriarchate and its priests, indicating that its position is based on divine right, custom, and history. The Secretariat of the Latin Patriarchate in Jerusalem announced that the Episcopal ordination of the appointed Archbishop Rafiq Nahra, Patriarchal Vicar in Galilee, will be on the 30th of the current month of April in the Basilica of Annunciation in Nazareth. It also announced that the Episcopal ordination of the appointed Metropolitan Jamal Khadr, Patriarchal Vicar in Jordan, will be the 6th of next May in St. Catherine's Church in Bethlehem. The Latin Patriarchate Secretariat indicated that the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, Pier Battista Pizzabella, will preside over the Masses with the participation of a number of bishops, calling on everyone to accompany the new bishops in prayer during this period. A divine liturgy was held in the Abdali Cathedral on the occasion of the Feast of the Annunciation of the Most Holy Mother of God. In his homily, Archbishop Christophorus Atalla, Metropolitan of Jordan, indicated to the Greek Orthodox that on this feast, we must hear one of the most important messages of the Church, which is to pay attention to the status of women. In conclusion, His Eminence addressed a greeting to the Cathedral Parish and to the priests and all the parish activities, wishing them every blessing and grace from God. A number of priests and deacons participated in the service in the presence of the parishioners. The Federation of Religious Orders in Jordan held its third and final meeting for this year under the title The Importance of the Consecrated Life and the Challenges Faced by the Consecrated People in the World. The meeting was attended by Father Maroon Mubarak, President of the Association of Lebanese Maronite Missionaries, who comes from Lebanon, and Father Rashid Mistrih, the Union's Guide, and the Union's President and Members and the Secretary General of the Congregation of the Holy Rosary, Sister Madeleine Dababne and Father Bimal, head of the Jesuit Center in Jordan. During the meeting, the President of the Union welcomed the guests of Jordan, Father Maroon Mubarak, who gave lectures in which he spoke about the importance of monastic life and the challenges it faces in light of the urgent currents in the world, especially in our spiritual journey and the Ecclesiastical Synod. Father Joseph Suwaid, pastor of St. Sherbel Maronite Church in Jordan, presided over a prayer of thanksgiving to the Lord who bestowed blessing upon us on the earth and a celebration of the rank of King for God who gave us His life, blood, love and presence among us. We ought to return to the Lord the gifts that He placed in our hands with thanksgiving for His love and gifts to us. The Greater Council of the Structure of Nations, the Knights Templar, met and decided unanimously to appoint the Secretary of the Key of the Church of the Resurrection and the bearer of the Seal of the Holy Sepulchre in the city of Jerusalem. Mr. Adib al Husseini to be a High Commissioner for the Advancement of Dialogue Between Cultures and Religions and the National Coordination of the Civil Aid Services for States. With all privileges associated with this appointment, it is noteworthy that Mr. Husseini bore the trust of his father's behalf 50 years ago, and that his family inherited the bearing of the key to the resurrection about 840 years ago. In the atmosphere of celebration of the Feast of the Annunciation of the Virgin Mary, a ceremony was held in St. George Church in Fahis for the inauguration and consecration of the Shrine of the Annunciation, which was donated by Mr. Sam Swayze. 
Archbishop Christophorus sponsored the celebration in the presence of Archmandrite Christophorus Haddad, the spiritual head of the city and a gathering of priests and official figures and a large group of attendees. The choir of the Dormition of the Virgin Mary Mufraq revived an evening of Easter hymns led by Rami Samawi, bringing the audience into an atmosphere of reverence. In the end, everyone gathered at the table of love in an atmosphere dominated by the spirit of brotherhood and love. His Beatitude Raphael Sacco, the Chaldean Patriarch, celebrated Palm Sunday Mass in both St. Joseph Cathedral and the Mother Monastery of the Chaldean Girls of Mary in Baghdad, with the help of a number of priests and in the presence of a large audience of worshippers and a large number of children chanting. In the sermon, his Beatitude explained the meaning of this feast, which is an opportunity for the believers to review important matters in their lives to direct their efforts to walk in the footsteps of the humble Jesus and apply his teachings to the hope of eternal life. He also asked for prayers for Iraq to come out of its crisis and for Ukraine and Russia to end the war. The global company specialized in luxury tourism services Flashback included Jordan in its list of all best travel destinations for the year 2022, which ranked third in the world according to what was published by the British Metro newspaper, indicating that the kingdom is rich with many diverse and unique tourists, religious and archaeological sites, such as Petra, Wadiram, Jerash, and the Dead Sea, in addition to the Christian pilgrimage sites, most notably the site of baptism of Jesus Christ, Mukawir, Mount Nebo, and others. Here, dear viewers, we have come to the end of our news, and those were the headlines. His Majesty King Abdullah II underwent a successful surgery in Germany. Thousands participated in Palm Sunday procession in Jerusalem despite the pain and difficulties. The Latin Patriarchate announces the dates of episcopal ordination for new patriarchal representatives. The Congregation of Religious Orders stresses the importance of the consecrated life in the procession of the Synod. For more information, please visit our website www.nursajo.org. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, have a good day.